हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द लेटेस्ट एपिसोड ऑफ फोर्स एंड सिक्सेस वन फाइनल टाइम फ्रॉम द टी ओ डी आई वर्ल्ड कप नॉट द टी ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड कप वी सीम्स लाइक वे ऑलरेडी मूविंग ऑन बट इट्स बीन अ कपल ऑफ डेज द रिजल्ट हैज स्टार्टेड टू सिंक इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया हैव वन दियर सिक्स ओ डी आई वर्ल्ड कप बीटिंग इंडिया इन अहमदाबाद ऑन द एट द फाइनल ऑन संडे यर वी आर joining joining me is kalyani mangle kalyani it's been it's been some time uh it's it was a really good final but uh, your first thoughts you have had your time to reflect uh the first thought is how wrong i was uh, first of all about the toss the moment i heard that uh, pat cummins has decided to bowl i was like what happened to an australian talk a lot about this the traditional wisdom on on runs on the board or runs on the board and uh, i was confused but after the tournament when you look back and after pat cummins had said i'm not that much of a pitch reader and then coming and saying we're going to ball for so i'm like okay this is probably it for india but then after all um, close to 100 overs were done in the match and you are like okay probably he knows better than all of us so uh, first of all apologies to pat cummins and I, I, one thing only gives me little bit of uh, not i'll not say happiness that everyone else thought that was shocking decision so i am not the minority so yeah. i'm happy with that like take small wins please yeah yeah but uh, toss is one thing but even the course of the context itself it seemed like uh it was so built up to be india's day everything was in their favor and uh, they were the team of the tournament they were the team to beat in the tournament they had won all 10 games uh they had the full support of the crowd and uh, they playing in home conditions and uh they wanted probably more than any other team at yeah. this point in time and uh, the way rohit sharma started batting it seemed like this is this is going to be at another day where they just cruise through the opponents and then uh, you know uh, just it's going to be cake walk like like it was uh, in the other games whether it's a league game or even the uh, semi final against new zealand for example where it it always seemed like new zealand were in the context but we we all know that india were you know always ahead end of the day the result is going to go in their favor uh, the moment the first innings concluded you know you know this game is yeah. all but done uh, but here the the moment rohit got out even then even even like in the 10 over mark india were three down but even then it seemed like uh, you know india set for what they have done all along through this tournament but uh, then something different happens whether it's the field placements or the bowling changes uh, it was it was a day where captain pat cummins could put no foot wrong and uh, uh, also it seemed like not just as uh, at some level a lot of people including probably the indian team uh, did not read the conditions well in the first in overs i think um, if i have to put it this way entire tournament whenever india was doing anything whether it's batting first bowling first and it was a split right they batted five times they won it yeah. bowled five times first they still won it the main factor throughout those 10 matches for india was everyone else was doing catch up what changed in the final words after those first three wickets same happened in chennai mind you after uh, they they lost first three wickets but even after that the command virat kohli had between he's running in the between the wickets so with he hitting the boundaries they know what the target was and it wasn't a cake walk of course but they built it to that level and after a certain time australia was playing a catch up game but in the final that was exactly opposite uh with the their fielding was extraordinary one have, has to give credit to that especially david warner and manus labushain and travis head's catch of course but that that thing particularly for me changed is that india was not used to play that catching up game they were not the ones uh, they were always been hunters in the tournament and when they were being hunted then it became a little bit of problematic and what i genuinely thought the way kl rahul and virat kohli were batting the plan was that play it out till the 30th over potentially 35th over and then take game away from there and that's probably why they sent uh, ravindra jadeja yeah. ahead of surya kumar yadav but the pitch and the lines and then and the 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 especially the bowling changes in the middle overs that pat cummins as you rightly spoke about the bowling changes that pat cummins implemented it was um, 
it that's i think made india to have um, it forced india basically to play that catch up game and then we'll talk about batting later but that is what was the major difference for me personally see it seemed like even even until the point kohli got out uh, india were still in the game like uh, because sure kl was holding one end he was not you know uh, getting his boundaries there was a point where uh, i mean even after rohit sharma got out the entire innings indian innings had only five boundaries uh, when there was a point where they were there was one boundary for like 25 overs or something like yeah. that uh, but kohli was still running between the wickets he was still batting at a 88 90 around strike rate but kl was stuck at one end and and hindsight is a really <laughs> a uh, convenient thing at some level where Absolutely. we can go back and say you know what they should have probably been a little bit more proactive yeah. uh, but uh, given but i mean given the way uh, this indian bowling attack has bowled given the way uh, they have decimated batting attacks batting lineups throw the tournament even during the mid innings break 240 overs like you know what this this team this bowling attack could still do it um, And, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off, but they did defend some 230 runs against England, yeah. and that is the batting lineup that I know at that time the England batting was kind of a shell shocked, and they were not sure what they were doing. But still, the those those dot balls that Ben Stokes faced from Mohammad Shami, if that was any indication that this Indian lineup was well and truly. prepared and for to defend 240 and that was also not a very you know spicy wicket of sorts it was lucknow was also a very slow turning track and exactly. even then the paces did the job for them so there was no doubt as such you know even during the beginnings break sure they had to step up but everybody believed that they could step up because they have done it they have showed that they can uh, and there were there were question marks over the way so surya batted and the way uh, even rohit got out he hit a six and a four and he went again and then Uh, Travis said took a tremendous catch, but that's that's the kind of template he has played all along, yeah. and uh, I I still don't think one should be blaming Rohit for that shot, uh, but uh, the way Surya batted was, uh, or rather the way Surya struggled is 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 a lot more indication of how much slower the pitch were, and at this point in time we should probably give credit to Cummins uh, because uh, bowling changes is one thing, but even as a bowler he had not come to the party, but uh, he came in as uh, probably second change bowler and then yeah. immediately removed uh, shreya sayer where uh, shreya was probably expecting a full shorter short pitch delivery and the full delivery took him out and then, and then and then um, he came back again he was uh, probably bowling all sorts of cutters and slower bounces and surya couldn't hit any sort of boundary he couldn't use the pace at all and the field placement was so spot on like there was a long mid off there was a deep uh, you know third man i think third he man. tried one yeah. ramp and there was fielder not, there like. not, nothing was working out sure some uh, the strike rotation the forming of the strike in the last 10 overs is something that we could talk about but even despite all that the 240 seemed enough for this bowling attack but then uh, for me personally if you ask me uh the moment they switched between shami and siraj for the new ball it's probably the first moment of uh, some level of panic uh because yeah. uh, they had a plan shami was their first change siraj is going to bowl new ball because siraj is just not a first change bowler for them and uh, but they induced shami sure shami took wickets there is absolutely no doubt about that but it sort of pushes everything away from your plan especially when you're playing only five bowlers australia had the luxury of they literally bowl 10 overs with uh Mitchell Marsh Marsh running in and and rolling his arm like Colin De Grandom and and Travis Head and Glenn Maxwell and these are the overs where India trotted along at 3.54 runs per over so uh, that was probably the first indication of you know some sort of uh, you know is there is there a panic here are they desperate Uh, but uh, but what an innings from Travis Head Travis Head I mean I think it's 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 like one of those days where you know you are destined to do well like Yeah. Uh, he just played and missed and played and missed and played and missed and he could have been <laughs> out three times in first four overs if i remember correctly but and that's what it is right the two shots that the first two wickets that australia were got before those two balls probably they were one who could have gotten out first ball if there was a there was a little bit of confusion whose catch was it but uh, that didn't cost and a lot because warner got out and that was uh, i think the David Warner was always going to go aggressive same way like Rohit Sharma Mitchell Marsh same thing but I think Mitchell Marsh gave his wicket away but 
at the same time by the time they lost even smith they had already had one sixth almost of their target already in the pocket i know there is there will be a talk about like but there is yet more to chase and that is where travis head as a batter comes in then you have the left hander right hander combination you get that into picture just like what pat cummins did against afghanistan manus labushin's job was to hold one end and he didn't falter in that at all and talking about travis head i think he is genuinely aggressive batter but he took calculated risks that's what he did yeah it's like and awkwardly defending everything that you cannot hit yeah. and then hitting everything you can <laughs> and i think it it takes a temperament it takes a, i think just like what if i take you back to the 2022 women's odi world cup final like what alisa elliot said it takes patience and he showed exactly that patience and then whenever you little bit of faltering is there mind you he was so close especially against jasprit bumrah he was so close of getting out at least twice as far as i remember but it's it's he overcame all of that and then he played that kind of inning and became only the third australian male player to um, score century and that to in the chase in the world cup final in the conditions where he was not at the beginning of the tournament it's not a thumb fracture like pat cummins said it's a hand fracture it's a big risk not to replace us that particular player with someone else but they stood by him and i think high risk high reward situation and i mean the the i think for me personally in this batting it sunk in i it, the travis had an thing is yet to sunk in because there's the enormity of the occasion and um especially the conditions he played in so yeah, it was fantastic innings to watch before before you know dissecting the indian team and what i said this australian team there there are a bunch of happy go lucky people and the stories that that has happened in this tournament or in the lead up to that like zampa fell into a pool had a bruise in his Ooh. face and uh, he's fallen ill multiple times through the tournament and then mitchel master to go back because his grandfather passed away and then that is travis maxwell glen maxwell fell off a gold card gold card concussion of all the things and then uh, travis had obviously was waiting uh, to get for his opportunity and of because of all this was happening somewhere marnus labushin was playing all the games was not even in the starting 11 or the squad when the provisional squad was announced he himself uh, i think said i don't think i'm i deserve to be in this squad and that's basically your reserve player uh, uh, from the first third of world cup and ended up playing all games yeah. of the world cup and and i mean his fielding is separate discussion altogether and uh, the drama that comes with his fielding but he's batted also when it they needed it you have mitchell star who is a absolutely crap of a tournament until the knockouts and then he takes three wickets in the semis and the final each uh, and then comes uh, pat cummins someone who is consistently been ridiculed by a section of people in his own country uh, for you know believing in what he believes in for being vocal about what he believes in uh, not just in cricket but other social issues as well even during this world cup there were questions asked about this one tweet and how he said you know it's uh i like when players personal politics comes out it defends a lot more about the players he stood he stood by it i mean he did not come out on the cause as such but he stood by what the players said and how players have to be vocal about what yep. they believe in and uh, uh he's been labeled as a lot of things uh, in in his own country and uh, he has had a uh, he has this year uh he has uh, he was not here in australia won the test match obviously because his mother, mother passed, passed away, away yeah. uh, went to england uh, retained the ashes before that he won the world test championship for australia beating india again where travis had scored a century it's just <laughs> too much of a coincidence at and, this time and comes to india uh, with a squad which uh, and loses the, loses the first two games and there is again a lot of ridicule about not being aggressive enough not being in the face not playing the hard australian way or like you know whatever that's been said all along the over template. the years <laughs> the template that's been said all along over the years but they win 9 out of 9 games on the trot and then uh, goes on and lifts the world cup uh, gets the trophy from the prime minister of this country and uh, it's, it's 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 could there be a better fairy tale i'm sure if india had won it probably would have been a better fairy tale bigger uh, fairy tale there are, there are quite a few of it uh, with other countries as well but purely for this australian team and this you know 
bunch of individuals uh, as much as if you are an india fan you will probably you know be heartbroken uh, when you look at comments as the captain you know lifting the trophy you can't help but think in the back of your head saying yeah maybe this guy deserved it i think for me personally um part comments the player the person the captain uh, let's start how he became the test captain he started with the controversy it the controversy has never left him and um and that's basically like for a captain that's secondary thing the man management and on field so that always should take a priority for a captain but the way he started his captaincy is not expected to be a leader but he's proved it again and again that um yeah there is there are those leadership qualities to him and i think um there are too many when you look back and you zoom out from the final there are too many such a stories uh whether it's afghanistan winning those many matches whether it's netherlands achieving those victories despite lack of resources um whether there is ken williamson ken williamson coming back doing like uh, ken williamson ken things. williamson doing ken williamson yeah. things basically and and south africa the the nation that has um too many emotional stories the individual attached to it coming and fighting it are probably their best ever performances in world cup so there are too many stories other than the final are involved but when you zoom out and look at it individually you say that there is more to the game than just the on field stuff and it came out in this tournament there's some different ways it came out but it did came out and that is something i think uh, was a, personally that was a highlight for me of the tournament and then we come to the final see pat comments when it it's so it's if you are an india fan uh, it's not the cherry on the top but if you considering all those things as a tournament it was i would say it's cherry on the top yeah but now we have to obviously move to the harder Hard topic part. of you know uh, looking at the indian team uh, some of them were probably going to not end up winning a world cup in their career and uh, what's probably more more hurting for the indian fans is the campaign they have had they they have not had their ups and downs it's not like 2019 it's not it's not 2019 they won but even then they, they had their shares of ups and downs there were flaws they had struggles uh, 2015 same they had their flaws they had their struggles they somehow managed to win but you know you no know, you know what there is somewhere this team could crack but you look at the campaign they have had there is a captain who's has unfinished business who has missed out on a world cup win who is desperate for a trophy who is leading from the front who is communicated and who is setting a template up front you know taking on every negative matches that's come up even in the final is yeah. the way he took on hazelwood uh, up front was watching rohit sharma bat in the power play in itself is a memory that will stay for a lifetime in yep, this world cup yeah. and then there is this run accumulator in virat kohli uh, two years ago he was nowhere in the picture like he is he can't bat for his life and score runs there is no century out of his sight and then he comes back and he has a stellar odi year scores test centuries goes past sachin tendulkar in one kade in front of him a uh, record run in a single world cup edition uh, and then every other place who play the role gil comes back from dengue in in a week he lost like 4 or 8 kilos and comes back and plays in a week and then uh they scale rahul and shreyas here who also came back from injuries before the tournament and they did their role as well in the middle over shreyas as a spin hitter or like kela as a finisher and then comes jadeja the bowler jadeja the fielder uh, the the moments that he gave us a fielder uh and let's not even enter into the indian bowling attack that is kuldeep jasprit bumrah uh, uh, mohammad shami mohammad siraj watching watching the indian pace bowlers go about their business in this tournament was theater it was It was pure cinema at some level, and uh, they were so dominant that everyone expected them to win. Yep. It's like a billion people expecting you to win, and then it all comes down crashing at the biggest stage in front of the biggest uh, crowd that's there for an Indian World Cup match in India uh, in this World Cup. So it, at some level, you you have to feel for a lot of individuals for what they have given on the field and for the for the kind of. camaraderie and atmosphere they have created for this entire tournament we've seen a lot of videos dressing room videos and snippets the fielding medals in every match and 
uh, they played their best cricket of their lives and yet they ended up losing the final so i i don't know how else to sum it up i there is one when they lost uh, three wickets in playing against australia in chennai itself it was like world cup cricket it adds you pressure it's it's home conditions and uh, the pressure not just of a world cup cricket but what happened when india played world cup odi world cup on home soil the last time is it going to catch up with them and that was my genuine hope but the way they came out of it there was no doubt in my mind that um it's going i knew this that it's not going to be smooth sailing but it happened it happened the smooth sailing happened and there were moments where they could have panicked but they didn't and uh, especially i will definitely talk about the bowlers is that no matter what the conditions were no matter what the challenges were there against them no matter how quality the opponent batters were how deep the opponent batting units were playing 11s like players batting till 7 and 8 they found a way the england match for me is a pinnacle uh for so many reasons and one reason is that um the way they defended that score and that in that in that page where virat kohli i think is the only match where he scored and he got out on zero that's the only single score if i'm not wrong that's the score and even when that's your challenge these are the kind of matches that make or break the team and they made it and jasprit bumrah slow ball is thing of a beauty i'll i'll never stop praising him mohammad shami whatever amount of matches he got he just made most of it and not just made he flourished in that and um when you have siraj complimenting uh, bumrah up front you have mohammad shami as your first ball change then if you any get away from that you have someone like uh, kuldeep yadav and ravindra jadeja kuldeep is little bit more faster now and and jadeja with everything to on the line and that is what the indian bowling lineup was in in this tournament is that there is no there are no easy runs and there is no easy escape and even when they gave away runs or all that things happened like against new zealand for example kuldeep came back himself and redeemed himself and then batting lineup did what they did so i think it was said about pistons in nba that um for a hard to break there needs to be legitimate hope and if this was the campaign the, the why the hard break is of the highest level is because there was a legitimate hope and it was not because just because they were playing in a home conditions or what not they played probably one of the best world cup cricket they could have and when you look at the final from that perspective it's like it didn't came all crashing there were chances in the second innings also it was not like australia won it like swoop it but still it it hurts uh, as a as a new it hurts as a cricket fan because you seen so like the the heights were so high that the low lows will obviously feel the lowest and i think that's why uh, even if you take out emotions out of it as a person for the team that has worked so hard it, it it's going to you're going to feel bad for um, those individuals like you said who who made us all believe like the, there's legitimate hope that was created i think that's why every individual in that team um, has done a fantastic job in support staff as well and um, all we can say probably right now um, in immediate reaction is that it wasn't meant to be probably but that is not because there were any less efforts from them it was just their opponents uh, understood the conditions better and only to take advantage of it i think somewhere someone made a prophecy even they wrote the slogan for this tournament <laughs> it takes one day and then on that particular day on that particular you know moment in ahmedabad on sunday that day that one day australia was the better team and that probably sums up the stellar tournament where this so much of good cricket so much of good stories and uh, it it probably i mean it's still probably a live discussion but it it 
showed why ODI cricket is still relevant and why ODI cricket has so much more to offer uh, over the next four years, the next four years uh, where the next 2027 World Cup is set to happen in South Africa. There is a Champions Trophy where uh, it's scheduled to happen in Pakistan at this point in time. Um, but uh, obviously a lot of team will be going into the transition and including the Indian team because the focus will shift to T20s. There is a T20 World Cup in like six and a half months seven months but we will we will bring you all that we will come to that as well but for now from this world cup uh, we are signing off from fours and sixes new indian express so uh, we have had our stellar colleagues swarup swaminathan who was there for the final heroes mirza uh, who traveled for the final and uh, traveled for the semi-final and all the lot a lot of matches we kind of you know uh, mixing up here but uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, thank you so much for uh, traveling with us through the World Cup and thank you so much for watching. Uh, until next time, this is Gomesh and Kalyani Mumbai. Thank you.